Because of his leadership as a Union commander during the American Civil War, 1861 to 1865, Ambrose Burnside, 1824 to 1881, is one of the most well-known figures in the annals of American history. At the first Battle of Bull Run in July 1861, Burnside participated in combat for the first time during the Civil War. After participating in the Maryland Campaign at Antietam, he led an invasion army into North Carolina. This invasion was successful. Burnside was hesitant to take the role of commander of the Union Army of the Potomac when it was offered to him in November 1862, yet, he was ultimately forced to accept the position. This is the story of one of the U.S. most prominent Civil Wars figures, and today, we will be uncovering his intense and intriguing life. In January of 1863, after the Union suffered a devastating blow at the hands of the Confederacy at the Battle of Fredericksburg, he was deprived of command. After that, throughout the autumn of 1863, Burnside participated in the defense of Knoxville while also acting as a department commander in Ohio. After the disastrous performance of his unit at the Battle of the Crater in July 1864, he eventually resigned from the army. After the end of the Civil War, Burnside worked as a director for a railroad, and he later went on to become a senator and the governor of Rhode Island. In the year 1881, he passed away when he was 57 years old. In the year 1824, on May 23, Ambrose E. Burnside came into this world in the town of Liberty, Indiana. Before assisting Burnside with his application to West Point in 1843, his father worked as a court clerk and farmer, and Burnside was the son of these two professions. During his teenage years, Burnside worked as a tailor. Burnside did exceptionally well in all of his classes, but he came dangerously close to being discharged from the military because he did not meet the severe requirements that are set by the military. Despite this, he had an academic performance in 1847 that was good enough to place him 18th out of the 38 students. During the Mexican-American War, 1846-1848, Burnside served as an artillery officer for a regiment that was given the responsibility of garrison duty. His next mission took him to the western border, and in the year 1849, he was fatally wounded by an Apache arrow when it struck him in the neck. In the year 1852, he was shipped off to the Ford Adams in Newport, Rhode Island. Mary Richmond Bishop, who was born and raised in Providence, was the woman he would later marry. Burnside withdrew from the army in 1853 so that he could devote his full attention to the development of a breech-loading carbine rifle, which he had conceived of while serving on the frontier. Following the failure of the Burnside carbine business, Burnside was forced to sell the patent in order to satisfy his financial responsibilities. Despite this, the cannon saw widespread usage across the cavalry during the whole duration of the Civil War. After graduating from West Point, where he developed a close relationship with his future adversary, George McClellan, Burnside went on to serve as a general in the Rhode Island Militia and later as the treasurer of the Illinois Central Railroad. At the beginning of the Civil War in 1861, Burnside had an important role in the organization of the Rhode Island Militia, and his regiment was one of the first to arrive in Washington, D.C. Burnside served as a colonel during the First Battle of Bull Run, Manassas, which was an early setback for the Union and occurred before he was promoted to the rank of Brigadier General of Volunteers. Burnside was in charge of a series of raids and amphibious operations along the southern coast for the following several months after he was assigned command of an expeditionary army in North Carolina in September 1861. The occupation of Roanoke Island and the town of New Bern in North Carolina was accomplished with relative ease thanks to Burnside's campaign, which also paved the way for a permanent blockade of the Atlantic coast by the Union. Burnside was awarded the rank of Major General of Volunteers in recognition of his accomplishments, and the majority of his soldiers were sent back to join George McClellan's Army of the Potomac. Burnside, who was known for his extreme modesty, was offered the position of Union commander on two separate occasions during this time period but turned both offers down. The Maryland Campaign of September 1862 was the next major operation that Burnside was in charge of as Corps commander. A standstill was reached in the conflict as a result of Burnside's inability to move his army across a stone bridge that became known as Burnside's Bridge. This prevented the Union from launching an instant assault on the enemy. In November 1862, Burnside was named the new commander of the Army of the Potomac, succeeding McClellan in that role. He gave his assent against his better judgment and immediately led a daring onslaught into Richmond, the capital of the Confederacy. After General Ambrose Burnside experienced major difficulties while attempting to cross the Rappahannock River, General Robert E. Lee was able to rally his Army of Northern Virginia outside of Fredericksburg. 
A series of fruitless frontal assaults by Burnside's forces against Lee's highly impenetrable defenses led to the following overwhelming victory of the Confederacy at the Battle of Fredericksburg, which resulted in the loss of nearly 13,000 fatalities or injuries on the part of the Union. Burnside made an effort to rally his disgruntled soldiers for a second assault, but the mud march strategy ultimately failed due to heavy rains. Burnside was under the impression that his commanders had been recalcitrant throughout the campaign. As a result, he suggested that Lincoln fire numerous generals or accept his own resignation. In January 1863, President Abraham Lincoln made the decision to relieve General Ambrose Burnside of his command and install General Joseph Hooker in his place. Burnside was given the responsibility of leading the Ohio Department in March 1863. In a region that is well known for its anti-war stance, Burnside's arrest of politician Clement Vallandigham on charges of sedition caused a minor incident. During the fall of 1863, Burnside was a participant in the Knoxville campaign, which was the subsequent major military engagement. He outmaneuvered James Longstreet, the Confederate general who was in charge of Knoxville, and was able to keep the city under his control until reinforcements from General William T. Sherman arrived. Burnside took part in Ulysses S. Grant's Overland campaign after regaining command of his previous corps in the spring of 1864. This included taking part in the battles of the Wilderness and Spotsylvania Courthouse. In July of 1864, during the Siege of Petersburg, Burnside came up with the audacious notion to construct a mine underneath the Confederate position and then ignite explosives in order to break through the defensive lines. As a direct result of the poor execution of Burnside's strategy, 3,800 of his troops were either killed or wounded during the battle. After the terrible events of the Battle of the Crater, Burnside was granted some time off. It was not until April 1865, shortly after Robert E. Lee's surrender at Appomattox, that he returned to active duty in the army. At that time, he submitted his resignation. After the war, Burnside had a fruitful post-military career, serving as the head of various railroads and as the first president of the NIA. He was also a successful businessman. After holding the office of governor of Rhode Island from 1866 until 1869, he ran for and won election to the Senate in 1874. Burnside passed away in Congress at the age of 57, while he was serving his country. Thank you for watching. We hope you learned a lot about the interesting achievements of Ambrose Burnside's. Don't forget to subscribe to receive updates about our latest videos. See you soon on another video.